Hey everyone, my name is Elliot. Today I'll be showing a demo on how we can use the tooltip to change dynamically and provide information as input changes. To demonstrate this, I'll go ahead and run the human service. Here we have a field to enter in a password. And when I hover over the field, you see a tooltip appears with the words password requires and then the different requirements, capital letter and so on. As I enter an input into the password field, you'll notice that as I type, the requirements will disappear as they are met. So I just type in a symbol. If I type in a number, that disappears, a capital letter. And then if I continue on to eight or more characters, eventually the requirements are met and now we can see there's confirmation that we have met it. If I return back to the coach view, to make this coach, we have a vertical layout, an output text where you have the label for the password, the tooltip, within the tooltip we have an input group, and then a password control. There are no variables defined for our coach view. If you'd like to learn more about each one of the controls that are used within this coach view, you can go to our support site at support.salientprocess.com forward slash spark dash UI dash controls, where you can see a list of all the controls available in Spark, articles about how to use the controls, and a JS documentation to describe all the configuration options and the methods available with each control. In this demo will be using a custom JavaScript as well. And if you are unfamiliar with making custom JavaScript functions with Spark, we have an article describing on how to do it also within our support site. So just go to the search and type in creating custom functions and you can find it within here. Returning back to the coach view, within the behavior and then the inline JavaScript, Here's where we define our custom function check requirements that passes in the password or the input that the user types into the password field. And then here we define all the various variables we're going to be using with this custom function. Here we, you can see we have the view.ui.get password tooltip. And this is the way that we can reference the control ID and gain the view of the control on the page. We define view at the top here with the var view equals this, where this equals the view class. We define the rest of the variables here, uh, requirement booleans for all of the various requirements, and then a password array. First we go ahead and make the array from the input of the password. So we take the length of the password, iterate through it, and then create an array of all the characters within the password. Going through the array and iterating, we first check against each one of the characters and see if they meet these specific regex requirements. This one's to determine if it has a capital, this is a symbol, a number, and then if it's greater than seven or eight or more characters. Finally, we check each one of these and set the requirements equal to the true if it does meet this requirement. Otherwise, these remain false. Now checking against all of the boolean variables, we just went through and set true or false. If they are false, then we go ahead and adjust the tooltip to incorporate which of the requirements still exist. So if the capital requirement equals false, we set the tooltip text to have a capital letter and then a new line. As well as set the color style of the icon you see there on the right to default or gray. And we do the same for symbol, number, and length. Finally, then we set the tooltip text to be equal to all of the tooltip text that we've been adjusting here. The last if-else statement is to determine if all the requirement boolean variables are true. If they are true, then we can go ahead and reset the tooltip text to be equal to nothing. We can make the tooltip disappear. And then we can set the icon on the right to be green as well as set the validity of the password control to true. If any of these requirements up here are still false, then we go ahead and set the password control validity to false. If we return back to the layout, within the tooltip control on the onload event, 
We set the text of the tooltip to be password requires and then all of the requirements. We do this so that when there's no input on the onload within the password field, we have the tooltip showing all of the requirements for the user to input. Within the password control, there is an event called on input, and this event is used to be triggered every time the user types in text. We call the check requirements function that we defined, and we pass in this keyword potential. If you'd like to learn about this keyword potential, you can look at our password documentation on our support site. And here you can see on input, we use the keyword potential in this case to find the length. So the potential means the input, the length of it, if it's less than or equal to 10, then we return true or false, depending on what the potential length actually is. In simple terms, potential just refers to the input as it's added. Turn it back to the coach view. So every time we type in, we call this function and the tooltip will be adjusted accordingly and eventually when we meet all requirements, the password input group here will change from the default icon color to the green. This concludes our demo. I thank you for watching and hope you have a nice day.